Before we get started, keep in mind this is still beta, so everything is subject to change over time. The following dungeons you're about to see were all done at level 88 with a max difficulty of 200. I'm being carried in this scenario by some of the server OGs that have been participating in beta for the past year or two. The first thing you'll notice is the PC slowdowns. This game is quite advanced in terms of graphics, so a strong PC will be required. I'm currently at max quality settings at my PC, and I have 16 gigs of RAM, a GeForce GTX 1070, an AMD Ryzen 7 1700 8 core processor, if this helps you determine what to expect from your PC. Later in the video, I will reduce my graphic settings and show the lowest quality settings. Another thing you may notice is the creeps in the final boss are much more difficult than the earlier dungeons we cleared last video. My units vary from level 6 through 10 here, and the enemy units are all level 24. My comrades carrying me are all level 24 themselves, the current beta level cap. You will notice I let the boss hit my units to test the damage, and with one swipe he destroys half my units and does a nasty chunk for the rest. As you progress through the game, it definitely becomes a lot more difficult. Now, there are some pros and cons to grouping up in multiplayer to exterminate the alien brood. The largest perk is the fun of playing with your friends, followed by the large resource rewards. Teaming up allows you to conquer more, much more difficult level aliens, and the rewards seem to not be split but every player receives the full amount, as if you were to clear it solo. This drastically incentivizes group play, but at the same time, greatly reduces the desire to play solo. There is, however, a strong perk to doing these dungeons solo. Taking into account that the unit that gets the killing blow on a creature gets all the experience, playing alone allows you to control which units soak up the majority of the experience that you get. Units that fall behind in level usually stay behind in level because the higher level units do so much more damage, they pretty much always still steal the killing blow from the weaker units. Playing alone allows you to take fewer units into the dungeon and just send your weaker units in to quickly level them up and catch up to your higher level units. Success in these higher level dungeons will require you to have your entire army at tip top shape so be sure to utilize these opportunities when playing solo or in multiplayer. It was at this point that I first moved my graphic settings down to the medium quality. You might not be able to tell, but it is running just a little bit better. From this point forward, I set my graphic settings to the lowest possible. Still, the frames per second is quite low, but truly there are just so many creatures on the battlefield. Something I would like to see is each difficulty of dungeon level should have a cap on the amount of CPU worth of units that each player can bring in. This would create an anti-zerging natural mechanic, making the game more difficult as well as reducing the load on all PCs. So when I'm doing a solo dungeon clear and my goal is to level up my lower units, what I like to do is form two different parties. I'll take my higher level units and move them to one side, and I keep all my lower units on the other side. My current level cap for my army is 11 because my mothership is level 11, to give some perspective on what I deem to be high and low. Basically anything above level 6 or 7, I don't want to take with me because it's going to soak up the majority of the experience. Let's see, that should be just about all of them. I have quite a few. And then, once you have your lower units separated from your higher units. You'll target all your lower units and push control 
one. That sets it so that when you press the one key, it targets all of those units. And then you target your other team and control two. So now by pushing one or two, you can cycle between your two different parties. I'm going to go in with just my weaker units here. Now this is a high level dungeon. This is a level 24 dungeon, so the enemies are level 12. They're going to be way difficult for these low units that I'm bringing in here. One of the ways I like to do this is I typically try to get the buffs before I do any type of real grinding. So I'm actually going to bring my good units over here since there's no way these weak units will be able to take out one of these. And I would prefer to do the shield first, but it doesn't seem like I'm really going to be able to do that. It looks like the speed buff is kind of in the way of getting to the shield. So I'm just going to kind of creep up here. Don't want to get in range of that. Shoot it a little bit to trigger them. So typically what I like to do is get the buff and then do the grinding so that my units are all nice and buffed up. Because right now my higher level units are pretty much stealing all the experience for the most part here. We're going to try to get some kills on the lower units. Sometimes this can backfire when they... Ex Luckily I was able to dodge all those. That would have probably killed the majority of my weak units. Alright, with the first buff gotten now, I can s creep my way up and try to kill all the enemies I can on just my weak units here. So when your level 4 and 5 creatures kill these level 15 units and get the killing blow, they actually get a huge chunk of their level. And something important to know as well is you can over level any character, or sorry, any unit. You can over level it. So if this spider's level 1 here and he kills so many enemies, he could get enough experience to get all the way up to say level 5 or 6. And as you level him up, the next level is just ready to go. It's just time and cost. So by creeping in a high level dungeon with a bunch of low level units, you can actually get each of them a few levels pretty quickly by the end of the dungeon. Don't want to take much risk here. It's pretty easy for these units to die because they're all so weak. I'm going to get in the very far back line here, my high-level units. But try to mostly do this with just my lower units. Oh, those are the wrong ones. There we go. Trigger to mine there. One of my scorpions is quite low. The only units of my high level ones that are actually hitting them are a few of the siege tanks. 
The majority of the damage here is being done by my lower level units, so they are getting a decent amount of these kills here. Ooh. Took some damage there. Oh, there's another. Sometimes some of the enemy units explode after they die. I haven't fully figured that out yet. The shield buff is the most important one to get early on. Oh, one of my scorpions. One health left. I'm just gonna leave him out. This guy's super low too. I'm gonna leave him out as well. So you can see this one can actually level up. I didn't know that you could actually get the level in the match. That's pretty cool. Or if any of these other guys are ready now. Yeah, see this guy leveled already. Wait, level 11? You're not supposed to be in there. This guy gained a level already, so did he, so did the siege tank. As you can see, this works quite well on getting your lower level characters caught up, or units. So once you kill the alien nests for the shield buff, this is the best point to go completely with just your weaker units and not do any type of extra assisting from your higher level units because the shield buff is so powerful. I did find out recently that the shield buff is not permanent. It does have a fixed amount. It will regenerate out of combat, but it will only regenerate so much. And I want to say it's something around, if, if it says my shield is 117 at the moment, I would say it probably has a maximum of somewhere around 300. So maybe three times. Now, I'm, I am speculating here, but there is a point that it stops regenerating and then goes away once it's taken too much damage overall. And it's somewhere around 300% of what its max is. Because the higher level your unit is, the higher amount you get for a shield. I do have a really good trick in killing the behemoth here. Now, at some point, I imagine they'll probably change the way this is designed. But right now, the first unit that aggros the behemoth is the unit that he stays on until is it's killed so if you go in with something tanky say like a siege tank my level 10 rare siege tank here the first unit that actually crosses through this is going to be the unit that the behemoth tries to kill so i can actually kite the behemoth around just with this one unit while all my other units kill him so i'll bring this guy up here a little bit Bring these guys a little bit closer. And now I'll kite him around here on my siege chain. And he's just going to go for the siege chain here. So I'm actually going to kind of train him through my own units. I'm going to quickly go back through might hit me here. He didn't. And this is a very easy way to cheese him. 
Now again, I expect at some point that they will design it so each unit will have its own form of aggro. So the unit that has done the most amount of damage to him, he will divert and go for that unit instead. I expect something like that to be changed. I don't know when, but for now, you're able to utilize this trick, and hopefully in the future, it's not so easy. If you enjoyed the video or learned something new, don't forget to subscribe and like the video to help support this channel. Be sure to use the referral code as well if you're new to get these bonuses upon logging in. With only 10 days left to launch, I'm still having a lot of fun playing Pulsar. It's definitely worth checking out.